between 30 years ago sailing in this region and being out here now is a huge proliferation of plastic. The majority of what we've been picking up are more household items. They're things that you'd expect to see anybody throwing away in their garbage. And we can use these kinds of bottles that we can identify and buy bottles of these same types to know how they've been weathered in oceanic environments. Specifically how the surface has been changing is really interesting to us. The goals of this expedition are threefold. One, to bring back photographs and film to show people what's out here. Two, to accomplish some very good science to tell people what is happening to the ocean. To utilize the manta trawl was a two-fold expectation. We wanted to catch mctophids, which is our mesopelagic fish that come up at night to feed. So we knew by trawling surface water at night we could collect them. And we also wanted to see what we were collecting on the surface water in terms of marine debris. So here in, in this sample that we got from our night trawl, we're seeing lots of sail jellies and within one of the sail jellies right on top, we found a, a piece of foam. And we're starting to get more plastic in our samples as we go. What you couldn't see from, from the boat and what you could see when they brought it up was very disturbing. All of what you bring up, you can't even see unless you're, unless you're staring right down at it. I was surprised. It wasn't quite what I expected. It was worse in, in a lot of ways than what I expected. One of the dramatic manta trolls uh, pulled up lots of jellyfish and lots of pieces of plastic. And you could see pieces of plastic inside the jellyfish, outside the jellyfish, and you could see the jellyfish ingesting the plastic and it just makes one realize that a lot of sea life may be ingesting plastic and this is very bad for the whole ecosystem. Overall there is an impact and what we're going to define is how severe that impact is. One that people are talking about very much and that we are studying is the possibilities of the POPs, the persistent organic pollutants, uh, being ingested by the fish and getting into the food web. It's nothing like an eight continent or anything like that, but it's even more striking to see the small plastic debris everywhere where we look. Even with the first trawl, it's only, I believe, 400 miles off the coast of California. I can't even begin to name all the things that are out here and that we've collected. There are myriad threats when it comes to the plastic floating around here. We came across a derelict net, a ghost net. It's a combination of a lot of different kinds of nets, some gill nets that were just meshed in with the whole mesh. It's just a, a big old death roller the way it is right now. We do have a cutthroat. We do have oxycetylene. How big is that? That's pretty big, isn't it? Three, to experiment with solutions. We are looking at different ways of passively collecting the plastics so we could launch energy efficient collection methods. The ocean is our life source. Not only is it a place where we see enjoyment and where we have fun and love it, but it is where we get our life and where we get our breath from. If we ruin it, that's the end of us. The ocean and the earth will survive, but we may not. I am very committed to finding solutions to this marine debris problem in the Pacific. Um, 
we are out here to try to accomplish really good science and and to really seek solutions for picking up the debris.